the previous lesson, we've learned how to uh, use Coulomb's law. We've defined Coulomb's law and how to calculate the force between charges based on Coulomb's law with a straightforward example. Now, in this current video, we're going to examine the application for Coulomb's law with a bit more complicated example, where we have charges acting at various angles with respect to each other, let's say at a 90 degree angle, and we have multiple charges which are interacting with each other. So let's just simply get right to that example. But before we do so, make sure that you join our community by hitting the like and the subscribe button to stay tuned with all of these re releases that are going to be supporting you during your uh, preparation for your physics class, whether you're a teacher or a student preparing for the MSAT examination or the AP physics, these are core solid terms that you should be familiar with. So let's get right to the lesson. So we do have a practice problem regarding a Coulomb's law and the following setup is made and we're going to be adding to the setup to elaborate on the problem furthermore. So if you haven't watched the lesson on Coulomb's law, by all means take a look at the lesson on Coulomb's law before attempting this practice problem. And if you did, let's just simply get right to the problem and go ahead and try to solve it with extensive details. So in this following problem, I do have sphere A where the charge of sphere A a is positive 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 microcoulombs. 6 microcoulombs, which is basically 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs. And charge B, which is negative 3 microcoulombs, which is minus 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs. And they are located at 4 centimeters with respect to each other, where B is 4 centimeters to the right of A. So for the first part, what we need to do, let's call this part A. We need to calculate the force of sphere B on sphere A. We need to find the force of sphere B on A. And this is quite straightforward. What we need to do is the following. We're going to apply the formula straight ahead using Coulomb's law, which states that F of B on A equals to K multiplied by the charge of A multiplied by the charge of B over the distance between them squared, which equals to 9 multiplied by 10 to the power of 9, which is the constant k. The charge of A is going to be 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6. The charge of B, 3 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6. Keep in mind, we dropped the minus sign because we said this equation just simply gives me the force as a magnitude. By simply considering the diagram or the illustration that we have, we're able to, to, to determine the direction of the force. Now, because A is positive and B is negative, we're expecting B to be pulling A. So this will be the force of B on A in that direction. Now, the distance between the charges is 4 centimeters. We have to change it to meters. It's going to be 0 0.04 divided by 100. 4 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.04 and square the distance. Now, crunching the numbers into the calculator, we will be getting 1.0 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 in newtons, which is equivalent to 100 in newtons. So this is a very basic application on the problem. How about if we add a third sphere, let's say, and this third sphere, we're going to be placing it right beneath A. So we're going to be putting sphere C. Okay, so we added another part to the problem. This is the extra sphere, the additional sphere, which is sphere C, and we are, which has a charge of plus 1.5 microcoulombs, which is 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs, and it is located at 3 centimeters below A. We need to find now what is the net force on sphere A. In the previous part, part A, we had straightforward application. B was exerting the force on A. But in this case, now we added a new sphere, which is sphere C. 
and the charge of sphere C is positive 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 and it's located at 3 centimeters below A. So how do we attempt this problem? The first thing that we need to do is let's consider a free body diagram for A. So this is part B where we need to find the net force on A. So let's represent A as a point, B as a point, and C as a point. Now what are the forces acting on A? Because A is the main focus of the problem, so we're going to be having the following forces. We're going to be having the force of B on A is going to be to the right because the charge of A is positive and the charge of B is negative. Now, this is with regards to between the forces between A and B. Now, how about C? C is, is positive as well. So we're going to expect that, we're going to expect that C is going to be pushing A upwards, right? So this will be the force of C on A. So in this case, you notice we're having two forces and acting at a 90 degree angle, right? One to the right, the force of B on A, and one to the top, which is the force of C on A. And this is where it gets quite easy. We're going to be calculating every single force by itself. How do we go about this? Follow through. So the force of B on A, the same formula, K, Q of A multiplied by Q of B over the distance between them squared. And we calculated that part to be 1.0 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 newtons. This is, what, this is the answer for part A. And now we need to calculate the force of C on A which equals to k into qa qc over the distance between them squared. So we're going to plug into the numbers again following the same procedure. 9 multiplied by 10 to the power of 9 which represents the k. The charge of a is 6 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs and the charge of C, it's 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 6 coulombs. And the distance between them, as we have elaborated here, is 3 centimeters. So we're going to divide this by 100. We're going to be having 0.03, the whole thing squared. Now crunch the numbers onto the calculator. The force of C on A is going to be 9 multiplied by 10 newtons to the power of 1. 9.0, which is basically 90 newtons, equivalent to 90 in newtons. So now we are able to calculate the force of C on A, F of B on A, which are the two, the two forces acting on our focal point here, which is charge A. But the problem is not over yet. Why? Because we need to find the net force. Now, if you've studied in mathematics, if you're having two vectors acting at an angle, and in this case, these are the two vectors that we have them. We got F of B on A and F of C on A. They're acting at 90 degrees. So we're going to be using the Pythagoras theorem, which states that if you have a vector A and a vector B, and you want to find the resultant of these vectors, the net force in this case, the resultant R equals to the square root of a square plus b square. So we're going to apply the same logic here. Because we have 
and that force that we're trying to calculate this is our charge a we have one force acting on it to the right which is f of b on a and another force acting on it towards the top which is f of c on a so the net force we're going to expect it to be somewhere in between which is going to be right here this is f net and we're going to be calculating the angle as well acting at an angle theta so how do you calculate f net simply by applying the following formula f net equals to f of b on a the whole thing squared plus f of c on a the whole thing squared replace the numbers we have 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 squared plus 9 multiplied by 10 to the power of 1 which is 90 squared crunch the whole numbers onto the calculator f net equals to 130 in newtons so this is the net force acting on my charge a so if i put my charge a between charge b and c it's going to experience this net force which is 130 newton so we're going to calculate the angle at which it's acting right now and this is where we transition to to, to the mathematics of it so how can we calculate the angle theta we're going to apply tan theta the tangent which equals to f of c on a over f of b on a now how do we get tan theta to be f of c on a over f of b on a because we are basing this on the uh, right angle theorem which states that this is the hypotenuse this is the opposite and this is the tangent so we're going if you have tan theta it's going to be the opposite over the adjacent so where's my adjacent in this case my opposite is going to be f of c on a which is right here and this is my adjacent which is f of b on a so this side over this side so that will be f of c on a divided by f of b on a now we're going to elaborate on this in a different lesson because it's related to mathematics and trigonometry so assuming that you know that part um, now let's try to calculate tan theta based on that taking taking that into consideration tan theta equals to my f of c on a over f of b on a replacing the values and taking the inverse because we have to unlock the theta from the grip of the tan so theta equals to tan inverse f of c on a over f of b on a Re replacing the value into the calculator tan theta inverse 9 multiplied by 10 to the power of 1 which is tan 90 over 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 now you might be asking yourself why am i putting 9.0 multiplied by 10 to the power of 1 just simply 90 just simply for the sake of the scientific notation now it's not necessary from your end to do it but just to be systematic in terms of the physics application it's quite important that you do it from the uh, b being systematic point of view other than that you'll not be losing grades on it as long as you're able to get the correct answer towards the end so theta will be 42 degrees so it means my net force is 130 newtons acting at 42 degrees when i'm going to be adding this extra charge right here so if i'm going to be placing my charge a with b on the right side and c at the bottom with the specific distances mentioned my sphere a is going to be witnessing the following net force acting at this specific angle so this is an elaborate example on the application of coulomb's law just simply by all means you can replay the video to have a smooth transition let's just break down the steps we start by calculating the forces between a and b without any additional charge which is straightforward application of coulomb's law which starts right here then we added the charge c which is to the south or to the bottom 
under object A, charge A, and then where things got interesting a bit, where we use the Pythagoras theorem in order to calculate the net force, then we use a bit of trigonometric practices to be able to calculate the angle. So the second part is broken down to two to three steps. You find the net force, you find the you find the forces individually, then you find the net force, then you find the angle. So take a look at this video again, replay it, transition through the steps a one, one at a time just to make sure that you're able to do it and trace your steps by yourself. You can pause the video, try to attempt it by yourself from the beginning and walk through the problem one step at a time just to make sure you're able to grasp the concept. So this wraps it up for this example on Coulomb's law. That you found the lesson beneficial. Now, if you're a physics student who's going to be embarking on a journey for your AP preparation, MSAP preparation at a high school level, college entry level, or engineering student who want to brush up on these concepts, then this place is definitely for you. In which we're going to be sharing with you these premium quality educational content that will truly push you in that direction. So, by all means, click the subscribe button and join our community, and I'll see you in the upcoming lesson. Mm -hmm.